Andre. And I'm Rachel, and this is our van Charlie. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. So Charlie is a 2005 um, sprinter. Currently, he's got almost 230,000 miles on him. After we got COVID and recovered, we had just got sick and tired of being stuck at home. Living in my studio-sized bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> we thought to ourselves, Jesus, we could live in a studio-sized van. Yeah, so we bought it in North Carolina and built this in five <laughs> weeks. So come on in. This is the main part of the van where we sleep. Um, it also functions as our closets. Um, I had seen a bus that this couple had built out and really liked the kind of curvature of the shape of the bus um, and wanted to utilize as much vertical space as we could. So that's how we ended up with what we call the wagon wheel. Um, We've got this kind of curved shelving unit, uh, two of them, made out of just three quarter inch ply. Um, and then we've got some shelves here. Everything is bungeed in. It allows for big bulky winter items to kind of get smashed in there. Um, nothing's rigid, which is fantastic when your home is moving. We've actually got LED lighting hidden behind each of these three um, pieces of wood that we routed out. So our bed functions uh, kind of in this day bed setup uh, during the day while we're traveling, while we're cooking and eating. Um, it's actually two thirds of a bed currently. And then here, this uh, is slatted and just pulls out. And we've got another section of mattress that lives in the garage that we just pop in take the sheets out and it becomes a queen size bed. Um, we would have potentially liked to sleep sideways but are too tall. Then we have our little table that slides out if you're working on the go or eating or playing cards. It's cantilevered so it's got just as much as this in the back and then when it slides in um, there's actually a magnet back there that keeps it from sliding out every time you hit the brakes. The face of our van uh, has quite a bit of built-in storage. One thing that we're very grateful we thought of ahead of time is a space for dirty laundry. Apparently other van build-outs neglected that component. So here we've got a drawer for our dirty laundry. Um, and then over here we've got a matching one, but is our linen closet. So towels, extra blankets. Also everything is on these uh, marine magnets. So everything stays in place as we're driving. It doesn't flap around. Um, and then down here we have our pantry. So liquor cabinet, food, our large pan because it won't fit above and our spice rack. So our build continued to evolve while we were on the road, figuring out that we didn't have places to put things or whatnot. Uh, one of the things we realized was hooks are crucial. They are multi-purposed. Um, so we've got two hooks on either side. We hang anything, bags, this is our grocery bag. Um, we found this antler in a vintage thrift store or something doubles as a hat rack. And then we put up some shelves just to add some personalization, some decor. Our newest addition and one of my favorites, it's actually the root ball from kelp, uh, but it kind of looks like a bird nest. We wanted a seating area, a place to hang out. Um, so we have these two benches that are pretty wide and cozy. We can hang out here, we can pull the table out. Uh, and have an uh, eating surface, a workspace. Underneath the benches, uh, we've kind of utilized every square inch of space that we could. So underneath the one on the right, uh, our toilet slides in and out. It's just a simple Dometic toilet. It hermetically seals. We try to implement a no pooping policy when we can, just because it's an easier cleanup, but nature calls, nature calls. And then we've got all of our toiletries just next to it. So we've got our toilet paper, shampoo, conditioner, lotions, everything you could possibly need. This is the boys room. And this is the boys room for peeing. <laughs> so Rachel is the builder of this van. 
I don't take credit for it. Don't tell her I said that. So right here, we what we got is our uh, Goal Zero system. I went down so many rabbit holes of solar widgets and battery management systems. And for us, plug and play, Goal Zero, we have the 1250 Goal Zero. Thank you, Spencer Peterman, for providing our sink bowl. We found a pile of them that were discarded rejects. It is connected to a little 12 volt thing. <sighs> Opening up, we have a little 12 volt pump. Six, six, and six. These are fresh, and they go right into here for the pump. There's our gray water. But we fill these up at the like Safeways or the Whole Foods with the uh, you know reverse osmosis water and. Uh, it works great. I built this backsplash and it's kind of turned into like the main feature. We have a friend who's a stonemason who we spent a few days with while we were on the road on our first cross country leg and he had all of this slate just in his, on his property and allowed us to use whatever we wanted. So we have this kind of mountainscape um, made with slate. This is actually Italian marble. Um, and then just the timber we got at Home Depot, it's edging. And then the overhead is where we keep all of our plates, dishes, glassware, um, and then also our cookware. We went for the slides because uh, we didn't want anything that like came out and could potentially hit you in the head. Um, the slides kind of just disappear and they keep everything in place while we're driving down bumpy roads. Our countertop is a beautiful live edge slab. We found this slab and put it in um, and just love the feel that it gives the whole kitchen. Uh, we've also got these two bowls that we cut in half and screwed to the wall. They act as our fruit bowls. We have this tiny little Japanese bonsai that brings a little bit of the outdoors in with us. For cooking, we debated whether or not to have a built-in, uh, but we really wanted the counter space, so we just have a portable propane stove, a camping stove that lives in the crate down there, and we can pop it up here, we can pop it on the crate. If we're at a groovy campsite, we put it out on the picnic tables provided and cook outdoors. Here we've got our fridge. Um, we've been kind of collecting magnets from all of the places we've been so far um, and it's got a key so that prevents it from opening as we take sharp turns and it's actually got a really decent amount of storage space we can go probably about a week on the food that we can put in here so here in the back of the van we've got our garage it's a pretty massive amount of storage space we've got the extra section of our mattress that we pop in uh, when it's time to sleep We've got camping chairs, a table, the guitar, um, our two extra batteries that are in parallel to our Goal Zero live back here. We've got our Yeti. Well, thanks for checking out our van. Um, you can follow us online at Travels with Charlie the Van, which was actually inspired by this John Steinbeck book, Travels with Charlie, in which he goes on a road trip uh, across America with his dog Charlie. So I was reading it when I was building it, and um, that's where the name comes from. And if you want to experience Charlie on your own, you can actually rent him on Outdoorsy. The link is going to be down in the bio. Yeah, you can take him out for a week or a weekend or a whole month if you'd like. Hope to see you guys out on the road. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.